Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's section of Extra Help, we'll be learning the differences between chemical and physical properties of matter. So we're going to be looking at matter and trying to distinguish the differences between a physical property of matter and a chemical property of matter. The second bullet of physical and chemical changes will be covered in another tutorial. So here we go, let's get into it. What is a physical property? Well, first off, a property of matter is a description of matter. All right, so when you think of a property, I want you to think of a description. Now, technically, uh, we can define it and say it's a characteristic that can be observed without changing the object. So if you look at something, you could say it's, uh, what color is it, okay? Maybe you want to say, ah, what color is it? You could describe matter by identifying the color. You can use your, your eyes to identify the color. You could use some more senses. A different sense would be the odor something gives off. So a property of matter could be the odor it gives off, the taste of it. Hardness uh, refers to like a rock or a mineral. A diamond is considered very hard. Uh, what temperature does something melt at or boil at? And what is its density? You know, so a lot of these things I want you to think of as using your five senses or they could also be measurements. Now measurements come in two kinds. You could say something is heavy using words and you could also describe something as, oh, it's actually 100 pounds. I think you see where I'm going with, at with this. Okay, we could also say something is hot. That's a measurement discussing the degree of energy it has. Or you could also say it's uh, 98 degrees Fahrenheit. So these are different ways we can express measurements. These are known as qualitative. L kind of reminds me that there's letters. It's a letter description of my measurement. Or whenever I use numbers, it's actually considered quantitative. And I'm reminded when I use the N in quantitative, N is for numbers. So qualitative and quantitative. They're both ways to describe matter in terms of measurements. And once again, I can also use the five senses that I'm given with here. Okay, here we have a piece of nice notebook paper. I'm sure we all come to class with that every day. I hope we do. But let's describe that using our five senses. All right, first off, it's white. It has blue lines. It's a uh, rectangular. Okay, what else can we say about it? Can I say it's actually uh, eight inches wide and maybe uh, 11 inches tall or high? Maybe I could say that about it. How about can I uh, express its weight? Uh, I might say it doesn't weigh that much. Okay, it's actually, uh, maybe I'll say it's not dense. It's not heavy. Can we put actually a, a new number on that measurement at all? Sure. Maybe it weighs uh, three grams. It's odorless. Is it tasteless? I'm not sure. I really haven't eaten, ta eaten paper in a while. But these are things I'm going to describe matter with my five senses and or um, a measurement. And let me just throw in there, it's actually, it's kind of cool to the touch. It's cool. How cool? Let's say it's 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Awesome. These are physical properties of matter. And once again, I want you to remember that a property is simply a description of matter. That's all we're trying to do is describe matter. Now, a chemical property. A chemical property is really defined as the ability or inability of a substance to react with another substance. So I'm trying to describe matter here, but trying to describe it chemically. We're not going to use our five senses. We're not going to use measurements. It's either going to say something is going to react or can react. Like nail polish will not react with water. Nail polish will react with nail polish remover. We have a little chemical reaction going on. A uh, chemical property I could say is that a leaf can decompose. Now, I want you to know, I did not say that it is decomposing. 
Oh, I did say it can decompose. It may decompose. It has the ability to decompose. I could also say a leaf will not, here we go, will not rust. Okay? It will not do that. So these are things I can say. Keywords you want to think of might be, let's write them down here. Something may digest. Something may decompose. Something may rust. Something may rot. Uh, when milk goes sour, milk can go sour. That means it turns bad. All right. I'm not saying it is in the process of turning, but it has the potential to um, do that. So these are all chemical properties of matter. Once again, I can only stress that I'm using the words can, not that it's actually doing it at the time. Okay, guys, here we go. Here's our white piece of lined paper, and let's list some chemical properties down. Okay, first off, white paper oops, can be digested. Okay, white paper can not rust. White paper can decompose. What else can we say about white paper? You know, think for a second. What would you come up with? Did you come up with anything? You could also say that it can react. Maybe with an acid. Okay? So these are all chemical properties. Once again, I'm trying to describe matter. That's what a property is, a description of matter. But I'm trying to describe it this way, chemically. Once again, I am not using five senses. I am not using measurements. I am simply saying, can it be changed into something else or can it not be changed into something else? That's all, guys. Enjoy.